Hey, what I want to talk about in today's lesson is the ability to embed a Python interpreter in the C++ code. Uh, we'll see why we want to do this in a moment, but I'm just going to go ahead and run uh, this little engine here. So if you're building a game engine, this is a great use case. And what I'm doing here is I'm running my executable, and you can see that I'm printing out uh, engine is starting here from my actual Python here. So this print statement's what's actually being executed. Um, so you can have these individual statements executing, or of course you can have a script um, that's been loaded and running these uh, files so that you can really uh, sort of embed your engine in Python here, which is kind of cool. So anyway, I'll just show you a simple example and you can build off of this. But um, what I also want to show you is through the Python interpreter, which you can have one instance of, you can, if you've created a uh, Python module of your C++ code, you can also use those objects or functions or whatever the other C++ code is in your Python. So in this example, I have this character Mario here, who is part of my uh, modules, just a game object. And then I'm calling some of the helper functions um, from within uh, Mario. And I've taken this one level further so that this game object uh, itself can also execute scripts. So uh, if you allow me to just um, split this one more time, there's a Mario script here, which we can uh, modify. So I'll sort of modify it in this way, uh, rerun our engine, and then it's just loading that script that's executed with this particular game object. So uh, that's pretty cool, and that's uh, a really powerful way to use PyBind. It takes a little bit of setup, but I'll show you just quickly how I've set it up. Um, first, I want to draw for a moment uh, what's going on here. Um, if you do want help, you know, the right resource um, before I even do that is to look at the PyBind documentation and how to embed the interpreter. Um, you know, it's really got some great examples of how to uh, invent some of the code here. But um, anyway, what I've built here is I have a uh, library directory here, um, which has all the code, all the C++ code that I want to expose. So things like uh, a game object uh, class that has a particular type to it. So um, let me go ahead and uh, show what that looks like here. Um, so I'm going to quit this. And um, if I navigate into my library file, you'll see I have this uh, game object here. So I'll just go ahead and open up the uh, HPP file here. So here's the actual class. Um, and this is exactly as you would write um, normal, okay? Uh, your normal just C++ code. And here's sort of an interesting um, function, which I'll talk about in a moment, the execute script uh, command, okay? Uh, let me go ahead and I'll just leave that there if you want to take a look at it, um, but then I'll close this down. Uh, and then let me actually show you uh, the game object uh, class. That's really the, the interesting part here. So I've included my standard C++ libraries that I need, uh, and then PyBind, of course, um, which has been shown in the other videos, and then the implementations for my functions here, uh, which I have here. Um, I'll get to this execute script in a moment. Uh, but then I've just wrapped every one of these functions here in uh, the PyBind module. So what am I exposing here? The constructor, set name, get name, and then this execute script function. Okay, uh, that's what I have uh, shown here. Um, so the other things that are sort of interesting um, for this, as far as embedding the interpreter, um, you have to include this PyBind embed.h uh, file to do that. So that's what I'll embed an instance of the Python interpreter. Um, and as long as you have that instance live, which I'll show where that is in a moment, uh, meaning the interpreter, uh, let me go ahead and just show the simple sort of example here, um, this scoped interpreter guard, then you can do things like pi execute, either you know typing in a bunch of lines or maybe reading them from a file, you can uh, do that there. Okay, so um, anyway, what, what's sort of interesting is when I create these objects here, I, I wrote in an execute script command. So for this a particular instance of this object, you can load a script file that'll execute um, whenever I call execute script and uh, just opens the file and then just one line at a time reads the Python and then executes that line. Um, so if there's any errors in here, then you know you'll have to sort of fix those, I guess, um, in your in your Python code. But again, the point is I don't have to recompile the C++. I'm just working in the in the Python here. Here's my uh, Mario Pi script. Okay. Um, so that's um, how I've set up the um, game object. Um, the library file here just includes my um, header file. Um, I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about if this is the best organization um, for this project. But anyway, it just includes 
all of the things that I want to uh, expose. And I was thinking this would be an easy way to maybe have um, different ways to turn on and off things that I want to uh, expose here. So, so that's what I have in this uh, lib sort of CPP. Um, okay, so let me navigate back to show you the rest of this uh, project. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger uh, just so folks can see um, what's going on here uh, in the uh, engine.cpp. Again, not, not too much uh, crazy stuff going on, but I'm just embedding, again, the Python interpreter here. Uh, so pybind, and then I need to start the interpreter once. Um, and my understanding is you can only have one of these instances alive uh, at a given time, um, and this will automatically be created, or rather destroyed when it hits line 28. But um, I instantiate it in my main function, so it'll be alive for this function, and then I can just execute different commands here. And here I'm just sort of one line at a time executing my Python uh, statements. Again, there's probably cleaner ways to do this, right? We probably want to just load a Python script and execute it line by line at a time, but I just wanted to uh, play around with this to show you what's going on. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and um, let's execute our script twice just to it, um, show you that there are different uh, changes here. Um, and let me uh, rerun our script here, uh, the build script. And it'll take just a moment to run. And we should see, you know, this printed out many times here. Um, we might get some errors here because um, uh, we're setting the name. Actually, this this will be okay. This is just the Mario script that's running twice. So if I run the engine, um, you can see Mario script is running uh, twice here. Okay. Um, okay, so what else do I want to show you here? Um, the engine's pretty simple. So I think I just want to show you the build script, um, what's going on there. Um, you'll notice there's two binaries here, the engine which we've been running and then our library file. Um, so you can see in previous videos how I built the library file, but uh, I just wrote a little build script that's uh, rebuilding the library every time um, as a shared library here. I'm doing this on Linux. You can look at the other videos for Windows or Mac instructions. Um, and then just rebuilding our engine, uh, the actual executable. Uh, for this, we just need the PyBind uh, includes that we're using, and then our PyBind libraries, and then we just build it like a normal um, executable here. Um, and I've made the actual engine relatively simple um, with just the uh, engine.cpp uh, here. Okay, um, so that's it. I think that'll give folks um, an idea about how to uh, run this um, code. Um, you know, you can pause the video if you want to see the different scripts or the uh, setup. Um, here's how I've set up my engine as far as uh, the library portion or where I would sort of write uh, things here. And then the actual engine itself is very simple. It's just loading an instance of the interpreter and um, maybe loading a main script that would run um, the particular um, code that you want. Um, again, let, let me just uh, show that one last thing. Um, just again, how I would refactor this, I would probably, you know, uh, just move this into a Python file here, this code here, and then just have a really simple loop that always loads a uh, perhaps a uh, a main.py file or something uh, that would have you know importing my module and then maybe setting up some game objects and executing their scripts. So that could be one way um, to set up this project. Anyway, um, this hopefully this has been helpful. It's something I wondered about for a long time uh, before I learned about PyBind how folks set this up um, in engines like Panda 3D or Unity or, or these kind of things. Um, this could be one way to do it.